We're back after a bit of a break and today we're going to do another 60% mechanical keyboard build but this time with some better parts compared to the building guide I did a few videos back and this is actually a build for someone and they picked out some awesome parts for us. Again 60% boards are by far the most customizable keyboards you can build because of the universal sizes of the plates, PCBs and cases. They've gone for an acrylic case, this is a Tex 60% case which is CNC'd acrylic and I actually was able to get it locally at MetKB in Australia so that was nice and this is some pretty thick frosted acrylic which does show off under glow lighting which our PCB has. Before working it's good to put on the feet on the bottom so it doesn't scratch it all up on the table. Alright so to start off we have our PCB. This is the fake B-Face PCB from China, also known as a B-Fake PCB. One of the special things about this PCB is that it has RGB underglow lighting. We of course have everything else already soldered in, with the diodes, resistors, microcontroller and all that. So all that's left are the switches and the top LEDs. However, I did end up switching to a legit B-Face from WinKeyless later in the process, which we'll see. The plate we have is just a simple 60% aluminium plate in silver which offers various mounting positions for keys but we're just going to go with a standard ANSI layout today. For the key switches they've gone straight to the magical Zelios which we bought from 1UP Keyboards and these are available in a few different weights and we've gone with the 65 gram variant and this is the bottoming out force not the actuation force. These are super well known and popular in the community for their smoothness and tactility in a stock form, making up for the lack of common tactile cherry style switches. Before we put this in though, let's give them a bit of a lube. I actually already lubed them about a week before filming, just when I had spare time here and there. It's pretty self-explanatory, lube just lubricates the points of friction and makes everything smoother. Zelios are smooth in a stock form and is awesome that way and doesn't really require lubing at all but we're gonna do it anyway. And this is a Crytox mixture which is some pretty expensive stuff and I grabbed this from SwitchTub. It's easy to over lube these so I'm gonna do some pretty light application mainly on the rails. As well as making it smoother it does dampen the sound and it does take a bit away from the sharpness of the tactile bump which may be a downside to some. Now to the stabilizers. These are genuine cherry stabs so they're not as terrible and rattly as the Chinese copies but still I clip the little dampeners on the bottom and then also lube the stabs. If you have copy stabs then it's absolutely necessary to lube them otherwise the rattle really does take away from the typing experience with how it feels and how it sounds. Okay so I went ahead and popped the switches in and soldered them in, but the PCB actually just stopped working. I must have did something to upset it somewhere, so that was unfortunate and was pretty frustrating. And these cheaper PCBs are prone to such things, so you have to handle them with care. On the flip side though, we upgraded to the legit B-Face from WinKeyless, which at the end of the day fits the build much better. So here's the new B-Face PCB from WinKeyless, which is a Korean site. And maybe some of you can notice what's wrong with mine, which was my fault. Anyways, I had to desolder all the switches from the old PCB and put them into this one, which is always a pain. For the LEDs, we're using some purple through hole ones, but we're also going to use some SIP sockets. What SIP sockets are, are sockets that the LEDs can insert to. These sockets are soldered onto the PCB, so the actual LEDs can be put in and be taken out without the need of desoldering. And to put these in, the switches need to be opened up. And to add to that, I also bought some switch stickers with the new PCB. I have some pink ones here, and these stickers go between the two halves of the switch housings. It's not really necessary at all, but switches can have a tiny bit of play between the two halves, especially if you've opened them up for modding, making the clips just a touch looser. But in stock, they hardly move at all, but whatever.
I actually really like the look of it as well. There wasn't actually any purple stickers, but the pink gives it that little bit of edge with those clear housings, and then it was just a matter of soldering everything in. And then we hit another problem. The PCB doesn't actually fit into the case, which I had no idea about. This is because the underglow SMD LEDs get in the way of the ribbing on the case. On a normal 60% board, that area on the PCB is empty, and that's the reason why these line up so perfectly. I'm definitely not getting rid of this case and it looks to be an easy fix. I'm using a rotary tool with a small sanding bit and simply just sand out some small divots into those ridges. And since it's acrylic, it's pretty easy to work with and since it's also frosted, it's forgiving in how it looks. And these will be curved instead of straight and I couldn't see an easy solution to make clean square cuts, but this turned out pretty close to perfect in my opinion. The bottom line didn't even require that much work with a couple of half cuts. And here it is all nicely fitted. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It now works perfectly with the plate now being nearly flush with the top face of the case and you can't even tell anything's been done from the outside which is awesome. Before putting it all together I went to testing and really embarrassingly, I couldn't get the keys to work, but the underglow lighting did turn on and stuff. So I played around with the firmware and everything in the bootmapper client, and I had no clue what was going on, so I emailed WinKeyless with screenshots and photos of the PCB, and he just pointed out straight away that I didn't have any diodes. So I turned the PCB over, and of course there were no diodes or resistors. And I really couldn't believe that I completely disregarded them. And I honestly felt so ridiculous for not noticing that they weren't on the PCB. And maybe some of you picked that up earlier in the video. And this was because I ordered the PCB without opting for the diodes and resistors. Which I didn't even realise because it was probably 4am when I did it. And I honestly don't even know why you would order a PCB without the diodes anyway. But resistors is somewhat understandable. Fortunately, I do have a heap of diodes with me already, but these are through-hole diodes, but the PCB does allow for both SMD and through-hole diodes, so I was lucky there, but the resistors are just the small chip SMD ones which I don't have. These are nice and easy to put in, you just gotta bend the pins to shape and then cut it to size, and like the LEDs, we have to watch the orientation when putting them in. On the PCB, it shows the flow of the current with this symbol, and on the diode itself, there's a bar or band on the one side where the cathode pin is. And it won't work if you put it the other way. And then it's just simple through hole soldering. Now for the LEDs to work, we need resistors. And for these, it doesn't matter which way you put them. When you're putting in LEDs, regardless of whether you have SIP sockets or not, you have to check the polarity as well. The longer pin is the positive with the shorter the negative. And on the bottom of the PCB, it will show the positive and negative symbols and that's the way you put it. Although to make these LEDs fit, we do have to cut down the pins, and in doing so, they become the same length. So you just have to know what side is what, and you'll know what the bulb looks like in a certain position. And finally, to finish it off, we have our keycaps. These are DSA profile keycaps made from PBT plastic from PMK of Signature Plastics, and you can order this from their website, and they offer a bunch of colors, we have RCB purple modifiers with a WAN white base kit and these are dye sublimated legends with a super clean typeface on them and it's just class. The only downside with PMK DSA keycaps is that they're pretty thin at just about 1mm thick and also the sides aren't textured like the tops 
and are more smooth with scratch up quite easily if you're not using a wire keycap puller. So definitely don't use a plastic ring keycap puller with these. There's also a couple of spare alternative keys and of course we have the delicious F&J deep dish homing keys and I just never get tired over how these feel. And here it is all finally done. The typing experience is something I really really do like. It's quite a unique experience how it's tactile but quite soft because it's lubed. Whether I prefer Zelio's lubed or not, I'm not really sure but I do like both experiences in their own way. For those who don't know what Zelio's are, they're basically just the superior version of like the Cherry MX Browns being smoother and having a more pronounced tactile bump and they also come in heavier weights. And the lube switches along with everything else make the keyboard not that loud. The bottoming out sound is dampened a bit which I do like and because of the lube stabilizers there's no rattle with all those keys. Without the lighting on, it's a pretty cohesive build and looks good on its own. Nothing really sticks out. And this is a low profile case, so we have a floating key design, exposing the key switches from the side. And we can actually see the pink stickering because of those clear housings. Of course, the real hero of how this keyboard looks is the underglow lighting. Wind keyless do sell their own cases, but they're layered sandwich cases. So I'm pretty happy we went with the text case as it gives that unified appearance where the entirety of the case is glowing besides the plate. The diffusion is great as well because of its thickness and the fact that it's frosted all the way through the plastic. And with the LEDs being closer to the center at the bottom, we don't really get those super clear concentration points. The silver plate goes well with the rest of the keyboard. We had a black plate at first, but it was too contrasting with the white case, clear switch housings and the keycaps. So I feel silver was a good choice to melt it out. In the software we can play around with the lighting with all the different colours, a couple of effects and speeds. So we can have a singular colour like pink or purple to match the colour scheme. But the slow flowing rainbow effect is the most eye catching and is pretty soothing as well. The key lighting which just serves as an underglow is so subtly tasteful. It's quite dim which pink and purple LEDs usually are. But it's such a soothing look and not really in your face like many RGB boards are. And the colours do vary slightly because of the PCB underglow lighting coming through just that little bit. However, because this is just an acrylic case and we're using an aluminium plate, it's a pretty lightweight keyboard but it's far far from feeling cheap at all. The acrylic looks great and is super smooth with it being frosted. And the chin at the bottom does give the case a bit more substance and accentuates that glow. One negative is that you really have to handle it with care because it does scratch quite easily. And we did have issues with the PCB actually fitting with the case because of those underglow LEDs being in the way, but I was able to easily fix that up. And the end result looked pretty decent on the inside, but on the outside it's completely absent which is great. A big thanks to Nicole for allowing me to do this build. There were so many mishaps that happened along the way that stretched the project for much much longer than expected. And I apologise for that, but I did learn a lot from it and I'm really appreciative of the experience. And it's probably the most I've worked on switches being lubed, stickered and having sip sockets installed. But it was a great project to work on and I'll have more coming in the future.